And I said, guys, you're the boss, you're the leader. Take this video, go show it to your staff and say, and go film a video in the showroom with them. Once you do it with them once, the uncomfortable will become comfortable. Like what I just did with you, go repeat that behavior. And that repetitive behavior will channel into the different departments in their store. Welcome to the Strategy with Jason podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on? Podcast Nation is Jason Harris here. And thank you for joining me another episode of The Drive, Las Vegas edition. I'm here with the one, the only, oh so famous, Gail Robinstein. <laughs> Gail, what's up? How you doing? What's up? <laughs> Did I say the last name right? Rubenstein? Rubenstein. I said Robinson. It was, cl it was, it was close. close. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Gail, thanks for taking the time to come jam with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, Gail, you know how I, I love starting off these podcasts with a little origin story. You know, A, because I'm always fascinated because nobody just wakes up one day and goes, huh, yeah, I want to be in the automotive industry. That sounds like fun. Right. So, so Gail, tell us a little bit about how you got started in this crazy little world we call the automotive industry. All right. So... It's a short story. <laughs> a bunch of guys that were wholesaling cars that wanted to build a business from scratch hired me. I was 17 and um, I worked for them for $5 an hour and found out I was really talented <laughs> and I built their entire business into like a million dollar operation. I did their sales list, hired their people, trained their employees. Wholesaled the car, set up the swap drivers. And then when I saw their financial statements, I was like, wow, I got ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> but it helped me find out how much um, how much you can succeed and all the cool things you can do in the auto industry. So I decided to go on a journey through automotive journey. Through automotive, and it's now been 25 years. Wow. And time just flew. Twenty by. no, twenty four years. Yeah, time flew. So you got bit by the automotive bug, and it's just in your blood, and you can't get it out. Now, I can't right? get it out. I've tried to leave. Know, I've tried right? to quit my quit auto and go into like the yoga world, and I can't because <laughs> I miss my paychecks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm sure you can find some way of collaborating the two, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, we, we're here at Digital Dealer. Um, you know, we we're just talking about how this digital dealer is, is good. I mean, it was good. energy was good. The, you know, the, the dealers that are visiting, um, I feel like there's a there's a change in the air, you know? Like, you know, like the ones that are here, they seem to be very proactive and it kind of feels like it's a time to kind of like reinvent, you know? Yeah. I'm gonna reinvent my operations, I'm gonna reinvent my processes, reinvent my marketing strategies it just seems like it's like reinvent and optimize seems to be the theme you know of this this particular digital dealer and you had a very cool session yeah about the tick tock the tick a talk <laughs> we're gonna rock the talk so let's 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 go into it. let's let's do you know like three or four like you know key takeaways you know from that session okay so the session was called the eight steps to rock the talk for sales Great service time. and parts Great. Yeah, it was for sales, service, and parts, and um, there were quite a few key takeaways for the students in the class. Um, one of them is, why are we even doing this TikTok thing? They needed to understand why and what the demographics were, and um, we could get deeper into that later, but that was, I would say, the first takeaway. Um, the second was, how do I create my content? Like, what am I creating content on? And is it actually gonna sell cars or help me service cars? And after I showed them what I showed them, they were like, whoa. Um, so I showed them three or four case studies with organic TikTok that sold cars within like five minutes. Nice. And they couldn't believe it. And I was like, it's really that easy. <laughs> um, third, they needed to practice. So I have, if you follow at sell cars like candy bars, I had 200 people in my session TikToking. Nice. They put on their sunglasses, they all stood up, and I was like, we are going to practice. Because <laughs> if you don't do it here, you're not gonna do it when you go back. So, you know, practice makes perfect. And then the fourth thing that they really took away was that they have to go back to their stores and help their staff overcome fear 
of being on video and fear of doing this and fear of change. And I gave them a whole roadmap of how to get their staff to like, just kind of reduce their fear and move forward with rocking the talk. Getting getting comfortable with being uncomfortable? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, getting comfortable, great way to put it. <laughs> well, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into the why, because I think there's a, probably a lot of people that are watching and listening right now going, really? Right, really? TikTok, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> All right, so the population of TikTok in the United States is 50 million people, and it's growing at eight new users per second. Wow. Eight new people sign up every second. Um, that's, that's a lot. Uh, would they ever surpass Facebook? with a two million or two billion person population, maybe. I mean, people consume the, the video content on there. It's very possible. Um, the demographic. I had someone in the session. I had plenty of people think the demographic was 15 to 20 year olds. It's not. 75% of the population is 25 to 55 year olds. Yeah. And they're educated and they are financially stable and can purchase vehicles. <laughs> so the demographic is very different. So once I went into the statistics of why, they there was a little bit of a shift and a surprise there. Well, that's good. Yeah. So, I mean, when I think of kind of from an operations perspective, right? You know, uh, the one thing I'm, I'm excited about TikTok is I think there is a, um, I think there's not, not, not necessarily operations, more marketing, sorry, I'll retract that, but more from a marketing, marketing perspective, um, TikTok's all about the content. All right, yeah. and the creative. And, you know, with all these other social media platforms and marketing platforms, you know, really limiting the way that we can target, who we target, how we can target them. You know, I'm so happy that I think we're going into the era now where the creative is what's gonna make the differentiating factor yes. for, a, for a lot of people, creative slash content, right? Yep. And which which makes me so happy because I was, I've always been a proponent about just quality, quality, quality content and creative, you know, make that, make your freak shine, you know, right, just bring right. it out there. Like if it's you, it's you and yep. put it out there and people will connect with that. Yep. So, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit, you know, about, you know, some content strategies. Cause I see, you know, some people getting into TikTok and I think they're taking the, you know, the not maybe the best approach to it. They're, they're summoning their inner McMahon and they're not being <laughs> themselves. You know, and yeah. the, 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 I think with any type of content like this, there's a level of authenticity that you have to maintain. Yep. Um, we very much promote being you, being authentically you. So I'll give a couple of examples um, and a couple of descriptions. Just this girl, Becky, she's a finance manager. Hmm. Every time I go visit her, I walk in her office while she's on the phone with the bank and I start dancing behind her chair and I'm like, it's Becky. She's still on the phone with the banks. She's working your interest rates. Just wait, wait and see what happens. And just a simple video like that, dancing behind Becky, I'm back with Becky, created 59 comments, which 59 comments funneled into like three or four car sales. And it was just me dancing behind Becky and then Becky sold the cars. So they'd be like, oh, what are the rates? Oh, how much do you mark up the rates? Oh, can you get me approved on a car? Yes. Oh, so all kinds of questions from just a girl sitting on the phone with a bank. Well, that actually brings up a really good point because um, a lot of people think, and I think that why they can't connect the dots is that they assume it's the content that, that, that sells the car. It's, no, the content creates the engagement. Now, what you do with that engagement. Right that is what can ultimately sell or service the vehicle. Yes. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, when, when people are thinking of getting into platforms like this and creating content like this, they have to have a strong communication strategy. Yes. Like they gotta be willing to actually connect and have a real conversation with someone. In the comments. Yes, this is not this is not a form fill process. Right, this is a turning a commenter into a customer within five minutes. Yes. And you can do it right away because they're so engaged with the content and they love you. Like they love the content, they love the music, they love the sounds, you've got them hyped, you've got them curious. Uh, we did a video, I showcased a video. There's a favorite, we saved this under our favorites, but there's um, this sound going on 
on on Facebook that says, girl, this is nice. There ain't no roaches in here, nothing. <laughs> um, just that little clip with a car dealer doing it, person in the car kind of joking around like that, uh-huh. sold cars within minutes. And one of them was a 2021 GMC Sierra 2500 HD AT4. Black on black, like sexy car sitting in the showroom. They did that one video, sold. Girl, this is nice. There ain't no roaches in here or nothing. Uh Uh-uh. That's it. That's all the video was. I gotta watch it. Yeah, it's really cute. It's really, really cute. Um, So yeah, it's just simple videos with like really popular sounds that are going around. So you you gotta be on your sound game. Yeah, I would say if you're, you should be on your sound game. Yes. Yeah. And it's really easy when you're listening to a sound, there's a button in the bottom right hand corner, you hit it and you click add to favorites. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you do, add to favorites. It's that simple. TikTok's easy to use. One simple tutorial, like we give free webinars with tutorials on how to do basics. So one simple tutorial on a webinar and any salesperson or service advisor could be up and running. Well, you know what? I, I think there's this, we'll, we'll go to the, you know, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? You know, cause I still think there's a, the reason that a lot of people don't get into it is because there's not, they don't have a comfort zone. Right. So let's jam a little bit about that. How, how, how do we encourage people getting comfortable with being uncomfortable? How do we encourage? Well, in the session, I was telling them that it starts with the leadership in the dealership and creating a social selling culture. So when I was at driving sales, not digital dealer, more at driving sales, I had, it was all dealer principals and general managers yep. versus internet managers. I have a video <laughs> of like 50 dealer principals TikToking. Awesome. And I said, guys, you're the boss, you're the leader. Take this video, go show it to your staff and say, and go film a video in the showroom with them. Once you do it with them once, the uncomfortable will become comfortable. Like what I just did with you, go repeat that behavior. And that repetitive behavior will channel into the different departments in their store. Well, let's talk a little bit about the different departments then. Okay. You know, because I don't think typically the service department's like, yeah, I'm gonna make a TikTok account, but but I'm finding you know you know what I find a little bit of a shift uh, recently I think in TikTok is that it started off very edu uh, entertainment right yeah and now I'm seeing more edutainment yeah edutainment all right where it's a combination of the kind of education and entertainment kind of all at the same time and that seems to be kind of a consistent trend which i think is an amazing thing you know for dealerships but how do you think they can kind of execute on that edutainment strategy edutainment <laughs> in service all, a technician could even just grab their favorite song or whatever a cute song and be like check this out and show underneath a car like people how many people how many people in the public get to go underneath the car and see what's going on under there um if you actually search automotive on TikTok, the top, the most popular videos are not sales, they're service. Really? Yes. And yeah, it's usually a bunch of technicians being like, we spend too much time together. And they're just goofing around doing like tire rotations or like, like rolling tires down the, uh, down the service bay. And like from one person to the next, they're just rolling tires at each other. Just like <laughs> cute little videos of what really happens in a shop. Yep. Um, but yes, automotive service has way more video views and searches than sales, which I find fascinating. I thought cars would be more interesting. Well, what I think is cool when you're able to put content out there is that, look, every business has a personality and an identity. Yeah. And I don't think that, you know, maybe a fair amount of, you know, owners in our space are comfortable or maybe it's not a comfortable thing. Maybe they just don't know what the personality or identity is. Right. You know, and it's like, I think, you know, when I think of all, you know, the TikToks, the, the TikTok influencers, right? Like there's a very clearly defined personality and I, I connect with that and I, right. and I enjoy and I appreciate watching their content, you know? And so, so how can a, how can a dealership kind of find their personality? Well, <laughs> I feel like if you put I your you staff- I you giggle by the way before you start the conversation, before you answer. Like, I laugh because- <laughs> 
I was at a dealership and we kind of did that exercise okay. and we sat all the staff down and we were like, okay guys, what, like I was at a Cadillac store and I said, okay guys, what rhymes with caddy? And one guy goes, daddy. And then another guy goes, if you need a caddy, I'm your daddy. And that is now their brand. And everybody in their community knows them and everybody goes to visit the caddy daddies. Oh, daddy daddies. So I think you can unleash the brand when you put the guys or girls in a room together and you're like, hey, give me a play on words. Yes. Like, let's just find a play on words. What rhymes with this or what rhymes with that? And then they come up with like stuff that they pr they think they can't say. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I'm not, my boss will never let me do <laughs> my that. Boss my boss will, will like never that. let me be a caddy daddy. <laughs> okay, well, they actually will. Yeah. Right? If you brand it professionally, you can very much be a caddy daddy. Um, another example, we put a group of uh, sales associates and service advisors in a room at a Maserati store and it was all men sitting there and I was like all right there's like no ladies in here well you're the men of Maserati clearly so we branded as like hey ladies ladies I bought my Maserati from the men of Maserati so you just got to kind of look around and find something about your group that has a play on words or that represents you and then kind of play with it no, I mean, a well, little. And, and, but you have to be comfortable to kind of let that personality shine. You got to let that yeah. freak shine, right? Yeah. You got to let the, going back to the beginning, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> well, but, but it's true though. It is, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, I obviously have an obsession with the color orange. All right. right. And yeah. you know, everybody on social media knows that I have a, an obsession with the color orange. So much so when I walk in, they're like, that was your car parked outside. Well, right. Everyone like, knows who yeah, you are. It was. It was. Yep. <laughs> you know, but that's, that's me. I just, yeah. I like the color orange. I like three letter acronyms and four letter words. I am in the automotive industry. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we did was I, I sat down with our team and we are, so, you know, people know us. They do know us as retail resilient and we have colors and logos and branding. But I was like, if someone's going to remember us, how are they going to remember us? And ours is sell cars like candy bars. Yep. And we hand out candy bars with our logo on it and they follow us on social. <laughs> and everyone knows, you know, you want to talk to the girls from sell cars like candy bars. That's how you, you know, that's how you find them. Well, let's, um, I, I want to go back and dive a little deeper, go down that rabbit hole of communication. Okay. You know, because, you know, I, I think that's when, when I've watched a lot of dealerships attempt to get into you know, a social, you know, you know, media content strategy of edutainment, you know, either on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, you know, it's, uh, it seems like everything falls apart because they just forget that, oh crap, this is work. I actually have to engage with people. So, right. you know, like what, like, let's jam a little bit about like from like communications perspective. Okay. I'm going to add in pr communications and process. I like that. that we yeah. Can, yes. So there's two best practice communications and processes that we've seen within the dealership platforms. One is on a higher scale level where you're using your dealership TikTok page mm -hmm. and you have someone behind the scenes and they're, the process is that they're handling the comments. Yes. So that is one approach to it. The other is if you're going to allow your staff to have their own pages in a di or TikTok pages and profiles in addition to the dealership one that they're owning what they do. So they're like, they have a business within, within your business, within your dealership. Yes. And as an entrepreneur, um, they would be responsible for the best practice of going in and answering those comments. Mm -hmm. Now, regardless of who the person is that com that's communicating, what we teach them is to roll through the sales process in a transparent modality and don't say, come see me. Okay. So whatever you post, never write, come see me at the dealership <laughs> ever book an appointment in the comments, book an appointment in the comments and follow up for the appointment in the comments. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Like yes. That. So that people see that you are accountable. They can trust you. You're transparent. So, it's really easy to say, so if someone says, oh my God, I love that AT4, can I get more info? Yes, gladly, I would love to give you more info. You know, it's a crew cab, it's a diesel, it's this and that. Hey, what would you be trading in? They say, oh, I'd be trading in, you know, my 1500 for the 2500. 
great, tell me about your 1500 because one of our TikTok customers might purchase your trade-in. So they start talking oh, about their in trade-in the comments, in the comments. Great, do you have photos? Can you post those photos in the comments as well? And then the people, so then there's someone else in the community that's like, oh, I saw that trade in the comments. So if they buy that truck, I'll buy their trade. Yes. And it becomes a two car deal. And sense. so we give them word tracks, even though they know how to say that, yeah, yeah. we do write it on paper for them so they could almost, so they could learn it to better strategize, to run the whole sales cycle in the comments or the whole sales well, that, that is, well, and, and it's, I, yeah. that it is not a strategy I would have thought, but that is actually really, really cool because um, there's this element of like, I have to respond. I cannot not not respond, you right. know, like you're almost going to publicly call them out and say, okay, that's awesome. Man. Send me a pic. Let's, let's yeah. do this. And it's interesting because the role of the salesperson has changed. Yes. The role of, so what I, when I sold cars 10 years ago, or I was a GSM, I would never be sitting there commenting on posts. Yes. Um, but now I'm as a salesperson, I'm also a marketer and an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Cause I have well, my own business on social. And that, we need to encourage more of that. Yeah. It, you know what? Early automotive, I think was very much so like that. I think it's, 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 it's shifted a bit. And I'm, I'm I, I think it's coming back. I think it's coming back because you're hundred percent right. You can be your own marketer. You can be your own company. Like there's just so much value there. Yeah. So yes. for anybody out there that's maybe watching and listening right now and thinking of starting up their TikTok game, what are maybe you know, one or two, three steps that you'd say, like, here's like, here's how you go. All right. So step one, start scrolling through the feed and find songs you like. So okay. step one, find the songs you like and add them as your favorite so that you have them ready to go in your favorite section. Um, step two, start filming like practice and really just start filming things that happen regularly. Um, and film the things that you think you shouldn't do. That The things you <laughs> think you shouldn't do are the things that need to go on TikTok. Yes, I agree, <laughs> I agree. Um, and step three, I would say to get rolling is involve your team. So if you do this as a group at the dealership, it works better than if you do it by yourself. And that's one of the things Because you that, got accountability. You got a little accountability partners, yes. teams. You know, you can all kind of make, you, you work, make fun of each other, work with yes. each other. Yeah. No, yeah. Totally and you'll always sense. have a team leader, someone who's like, yeah, I'll do TikTok anywhere, anytime, anyplace. But most people are not like that. No. So when you do do it as a team, you're encouraging the other staff. They'll start doing it and it becomes a team exercise. Absolutely. No, yeah. I think that's great advice. Uh, hey, I know we're towards the tail end okay. of our time today, but for everybody out there watching and listening, we'd love to connect with you, maybe learn a little bit more about the company, follow along with your journey. What's the best way to do so? I would say if you go to retailresilient.com, so retailresilient.com, um, or I was like, I'll just give you my cell number, write this down, 561-308-5882. Yes, I am the owner, and yes, you can text me. <laughs> yes, you can call me, but I would say call, go on our website or just text me. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. It's been a lot of Thank fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, this was great. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy with Jason podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.